I've been to a lot of malls in a lot of countries, but I've never seen one something like that. Well, it looks like something out of a science fiction movie. My name is Suzairi Sumari. I'm going on an adventure that will take me to the heart of Malaysia's culture and heritage. I'll be traveling throughout the country to some of Malaysia's most spectacular mosques and find out what makes each of these Islamic icons so special. This is my mosque. Right now, I'm standing at PICC, Putrajaya International Convention Centre. And right behind me is the planned city of Putrajaya. Check out the view. Oh my, my, it's huge. They have the man-made lake, the government buildings, and over that side is the residential areas. And in Putrajaya, they have two great mosques, the Putra Mosque and Tuan Ku Mizan Mosque, or better known to the local as Masjid Besi, the Iron Mosque. In the late 1990s, Malaysia's architectural visionaries turned 46 square kilometres of rubber and oil plantations into a planned city of modern architecture, parks and wetlands. And they call it Putrajaya. 25 kilometres south of Kuala Lumpur, this futuristic city is dedicated to the administration of the country. Hi, Abang. Uh, could you please take me to Masjid Putra? Oh, Masjid Putra, the most visited mosque in Putrajaya. Sure, no problem. OK, let's go. This city was built with a grand design in mind. Almost all of the central government's offices are here, including the Prime Minister's office. But Putrajaya is more than an administrative wilderness. It's a high-tech garden city. My first stop today is at the Putra Mosque. Completed in 1999, this mosque was named after Malaysia's first Prime Minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra Al Haj. To many visitors, it is simply known as the Pink Mosque because the rose tinted granite used in its construction gives off a glowing pink aura. And if the pink color doesn't stand out enough, then the 116-meter minaret will soon help you spot it. It's really no surprise this mosque has become one of Putrajaya's most visited attractions. Sama tak tempat masjid ni bentuk dia dengan masjid masjid lain? Tak sama sebab masjid ni nampak jalan lagi besar, lagi meriah. Unik lah, lagi design unik. Oh, unik. Uh, unik daripada segi pemandangan dia sebab dia kelilingi oleh tasik yang nampak macam dia terapung dan bila kita masuk masjid ni pun kita dapat rasa ketenangan kat masjid ni dan subhanallah yang tu je lah yang dapat kita ucapkan bila kita masuk dalam masjid ni kubah dia lain macam lain warna dia pink oh ha, ya, tak ada ya, pink ya, <laughs> tengok tu nampak rasa macam sejuk mata mandang ha, jadi kita rasa nak datang lagi ha. so Stephen as a tour guide why do you bring all the tourists to Masjid Putra what's so special about Masjid Putra basically this is uh, not known as the second largest mosque in Malaysia. Ah, yeah. really? uh, it can actually accommodate up to uh, 18,000 people at one wow. time, you know, to do one prayers at one go. The amazing part of the mosque is that inside there's no fan, there's no oh, there's air no condition. Fan? Yeah. So, don't you feel hot or...? No, that's the interesting part. Just imagine 18,000 people gathering in the mosque itself without the uh, air conditioning, without the fan, and it's still cooling. It's, it's just simply amazing. This wow. is the major attraction for every tourist. Yeah. So this is the thing that they want to see. Why? Yeah. Uh, I think I need to find out myself. Thank huh? you so much. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much. Okay. Today, the Putra Mosque is still the go-to mosque for the current Prime Minister. It would be nice to bump into him, but I've got a tour guide to meet who is going to teach me more about this magnificent building. Okay, right now I'm with Mr. Raja, one of the tour guides from Putra Mosque. Uh, Mr. Raja, yes. I would like to know more about the architecture of this mosque. Mm, okay, so basically this is the first building in Putrajaya ah. in 1997. 
and we have the three elements of the architecture for this mosque. So you can see over here, this is called the Mukanas. Mukanas. Right? Okay, you look at this. Uh, the lights will come out from here and right. then it will reflect to the glass here. This is related to the Quran of Surah An-Nur 35, which uh -huh. talks about the glass, the stars. This is the uh, actual design from the Isfahan Mosque in Iran during mm -hmm. the Safavid uh, era, during that time. Everything in this mosque is been done by hand, it's been carved by hand. Really? So I love this one over here because this is like just like doing the icing on the piece of a cake where you see the vegetation here. So we use the metaphor of vegetation surrounding the walls of the mosque here to associate, associate it with food. Right? Ah. So Allah, uh, when you reveal it in the Quran, it says that I provide the rainwater for the various crops to grow. A lot of Iranians love this mosque very much, uh -huh. and this pink mosque is very, very popular in Iran. Right. So one of their itinerary when they come to Malaysia, they will probably stop here. And why yeah. is it pink in colour? Basically, it's nothing <laughs> to do with the religion, something different, right? Oh, so right. pink is a beautiful colour, very soft. Color, yeah. Probably it's a colour of love. Okay. And as far as I know, from 1994 to uh, 2012, this is probably the only pink mosque in the world. The architecture of Masjid Putra is pretty eclectic. It's Persian Islamic, but with design elements adapted from mosques in Morocco and Baghdad. The carvings are from Egypt, the stained glass is from Germany, and the mimbar is a Malay design. So actually, I don't need to visit other mosques around the world. They are all here. You know, I was wondering why there are so many elements in this mosque. Elements of architecture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably want to know that the idea of this mosque comes from the fourth prime minister, Tun Dr. Okay. right? So I believe that uh, he needs to probably have a mosque uh, which can tell not only the local tourists, for the foreign tourists as well about the elements of Islam on the whole, right? So probably they want to blend all the architecture into one and then make it into this mosque so that for the mission you don't have to go to Iran and look at the Mukannas. Nice, nice, <laughs> good idea. <laughs> I'm in Putrajaya, and I have to say the pink mosque is pretty hard to miss. Not just because of the majestic image of it floating on the Putrajaya lake, but because of that skyscraping minaret. But this time, I'm not going to climb it up. In fact, I'm going to do the opposite. Okay, I would probably want to tell you something very interesting over oh, here. Give so me more. You give know, me more. this the minaret outside, right? Yes. So the minaret outside is 116 meters in height. Mm -hmm. Now that minaret is sitting on the floor. So this shows that the minaret has no foundation. You are right. Wow. This is the position of the minaret here. Okay. Actually, from here, over here, over here, and over here. Right, so square. So you are now underneath the mineral. Something really awesome, right? So I have another secret, right, to tell you. So let's proceed over there, okay? Because you will notice in the mosque here, you have so many shoe racks. We have about right. 500 of them. So why we need so many shoe racks, right? Okay, come. <laughs> yeah, to put my shoe. Okay. I, I was told uh -huh. that this area here, mm -hmm is going to be the monorail station. So I this do not area, know how far area? it is Because through. I only see a shoe rack. Yes, so you can see inside there. Ah. Right, so over there, right? So they have allocated right, the ground level to oh. be the monorail station. So meaning that when the train op doors open and this jamaah will disembark, they will put their shoes on the shoe racks left and right, proceed to the evolution area, right and left, and then mm. onwards to the prayer hall. But Putra Mosque is more than just a pink attraction. It's a communal complex, as I found out from Putra Mosque's chief imam. Jom-jom minggu ni mereka ambil kesempatan lah nak untuk buat pengisian rohani. Bukan sahaja program di peringkat apa, di peringkat dewasa, tapi peringkat 
uh, remaja kita ada kelab taekwondo memang ramai dan apa mendapat perhatianlah daripada masyarakat ini Putra Mosque has conference rooms, a school for kids, an auditorium and a decent library, all open to visitors. And for those visitors, yeah. non-Malay, mm -hmm. non-Muslim, mm -hmm. and they want to know more about Quran, mm -hmm. do you have something for them? Yes, yes. Okay, kat sini ada berbagai jenis uh, Al-Quran yang translationnya lain-lain. Ah. Uh, boleh tengok kat sini untuk non-Muslim right. pun boleh untuk sentuh Quran ni lah The sebab Quran dia ada translation. Uh. Okay, this is from Vietnam, yeah. right? Tian Kin. Tian Kin. <laughs> and uh, for the Chinese, we have it here too. And we have English translation. And the last one. From? Thailand. Thailand. Sawadikap. Nap. Below the Putra Mosque, there is a shopping bazaar and a food center. I'm pretty hungry, so I'm going to head down and see what's on offer. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was looking for food. And your burger attracts me so much. Our signature burger in my restaurant is Serunding Burger and Otak Otak Burger. Normally for Serunding, we eat with lontong and ketupat, right? Normally and... we get it from our Hari Raya uh -huh. special food on during that event, right? right? But because I love Serunding and I love burger as well, so I make it Western and Eastern combined into one. Give me Serunding and Otak Otak Burger. No problem. Ah, the burger's ready for you. Wow, wow, wow. The weather in Putrajaya is so hot, and I get myself a cool drink before I continue my journey. To get to the Putra Mosque from Kuala Lumpur, a taxi will take you around 45 minutes to an hour. If you take the KLIA Transit train from KL Central to Putrajaya Central, it will take you around 30 minutes. Once you arrive in Putrajaya Central, it's a 10-minute cab ride to the mosque. This is Dataran Putra. For those families with children, this is the perfect spot to have a good fun. They have rollerblading, cycling and many more. You have to come here to experience it yourself. One of the things I love about Putrajaya is that you can travel by boat and see everything from the water because the central piece of Putrajaya is its 650 hectare lake. You can charter a boat, go on a shadowed cruise or jump on a Malay-style gondola. Now, if you thought the pink mask was impressive, Two kilometers from Masjid Putra lies a gigantic steel masterpiece that will blow your mind. Welcome to the Iron Mosque. I've been to a lot of mosques in a lot of countries, but I've never seen one something like that. Well, it looks like something out of a science fiction movie. Masjid Tuan Kumizan Zainal Abidin, better known as Masjid Busi, is the most technologically advanced mosque in the region. The design is totally unique. 70% of the mosque is made from 6,000 tons of reinforced stainless steel. And unlike most mosques, it doesn't borrow design elements from the Middle East. Instead, it has Oriental and German influences. You have these gothic-looking steel arches, lattice stainless steel screens, and the whole mega structure is cooled using gas district cooling technology, which is cooling the air through distributing chilled water through pipes. No air conditioning, no fan. Ah, I forgot, no minaret. There are seven entrances, as I'm discovering, 
so it can be a little tricky to find the main entrance. It's a bit of a maze. Before I enter the prayer hall to do my prayer, I need to cleanse myself here in the ablution room. All mosques have one. No other mosque has one quite like this. It's huge. When a Muslim performs ablution, he washes parts of the body that come into contact with the outside world. Hands, face, mouth, head, and finally feet. The idea is to purify the worshipper from any material and spiritual impurities before he enters the mosque. I am going to meet the mosque's chief imam, who is going to share with me a lot more about Masjid Basi. Masjid ini kita berkonsepkan terbuka dan kita menerima natural udara udara yang 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 biasa dan setiap tiang ni kita ada mengeluarkan udara yang diproses jadi apabila jamaahnya ramai contohnya macam sembahyang jumaat maka kita akan menampung 24000 jamaah untuk sembahyang di masjid ini maka yang ni kita akan bukalah dia punya angin yang diproses itu dan ini merupakan satu teknologi baru uh -huh. yang diperkenalkan uh, daripada Jerman. Uh, sebab itu kita melihat di sini 75% uh, semua yang tiang-tiang dan dinding-dinding dia semua daripada besi. Uh -huh. uh, jadi sebab itulah masjid ini dipanggil sebagai masjid besi. That's the reason why the local call it masjid besi. Yeah. Ini imam kalau hari hujan eh hmm. macam mana nanti kalau hujan? Uh, masjid? Kalau hujan <laughs> dia dapat mencegah daripada tempias. Yeah. Uh, tidak akan berlaku tempias. Oh. Sebab ni dia ada jaring jaringan tu. Dan keseluruhan masjid ini kita dikelilingi oleh kolam, eh, kolam. Ya. Dan kalau kita nampak air ini dia bersambung dengan air yang di bawah. Dan itu menunjukkan satu ni ya, pemandangan yang menarik lah. Check that out. It looks like an infinity pool. <laughs> This prayer hall can accommodate up to 20,000 worshippers, as well as welcoming both Muslim worshippers and non-Muslim visitors. The mosque is also a real community hub. There's a big emphasis on providing activities for the community's children. The current masjid kita ni besar. Dia ada kita punya program mingguan, harian mingguan dan bulanan, dan kita ada juga international event. Ya ni melibatkan ni kita sambut tamadur rasul dan hari haul seperti mana kita sambut baru ini yang ni hari haul Syekh Abdul Qadir jalani dan kita ada buat festival kesenian Islam nasi nasi dan marah ni semua kesenian kesenian Islam dipertuntukkan di sini lepas tu pelawat di sini dia akan Naik cruise selepas dia melawat daripada masjid ini. Ya, yeah, just took a gondola just now. Untuk semua pergi ke ni lah, leg ni. Contoh yang tu. Ya. Yeah. Yang tu cruise yang kita memang ada koordinat daripada sini lah. Kita akan berikan ni kesemewaan lah siapa yang melawat di sini, beritahu awal. Kita akan cuba ni lah boleh naik cruise untuk melihat masjid ini daripada side daripada 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 tasik. Wow, 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 beautiful. I think masjid besi so wonderful, so special. You guys have to come down here. To view yourself. I can see why Masjid Bursi draws so many visitors. It's super modern and demonstrates the latest cutting edge design. It even makes use of ultrasonic technology to keep the birds away. Yet at the same time, it manages to convey a timeless serenity. Well, before I leave this wonderful city, I want to explore what else it has to offer. 
Masjid Putra and Masjid Bersi are unique and iconic. But there is still more to see in Putrajaya. Historically, this has always been a place for people to relax, even during colonial days. There are so many green spaces like the Botanical Gardens and the Wetlands Park. The shopping here is great too and the atmosphere is laid back. Now I see the difference between Putrajaya and other cities. In most cities, everything is crammed together. Putrajaya is a planned city. So that is why you can see a nice open area right outside the mosque. Only a short walk away from the Putrajaya's Shangri-La Hotel, this public park, sitting on top of a hill, is a great place to unwind and catch a bird's eye view of Putrajaya in all its glory. Since this is my last evening in Putrajaya, I'm going to indulge myself with a steak dinner on the lake. What a great place to come at dusk. It's a fantastic way to relax at the end of a busy day's sightseeing. Well, it's actually very hard for me to absorb what I've seen here in Putrajaya because everything is so incredible. In Masjid Putra, Masjid Bersi, the most high-tech mosque I've ever seen. And both of them are in this planned city. Now I see why Putrajaya is one of the must-see city when you visit Malaysia. <laughs>